Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Danielle and today we are going to do a Q&A. I have not done one of these in a while, I think probably over a year, and I decided to include my man. So this is my husband Leo and um, <coughs> he's coughing during the video, how rude. If you guys are interested in seeing our answers to your questions, um, stay tuned. All right, so if you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, I'm gonna go ahead and insert it right here. Um, go ahead and over there and follow us. I went ahead and put up a poll and asked if you guys wanted to see a Q&A and you guys all said yes. So I asked you guys to leave some questions and quite a few of you did. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to jump in them. All right, the first question is says, if we are, are y'all, one of my Southern girls, more similar or alike or more opposite from each other? Mm, I'd say more opposite, no? Yeah, we are definitely polar opposites of each other. Leo is much more calm and conservative and level-headed. Very much the strong and quiet and handsome type. Very handsome. Very handsome. And I am, how am I? <clears throat> Little... Not shy. <laughs> um, got the question. Because this is on the spot. What describe me? How am I? How is uh, my personality? You're really outgoing and you know a little hot headed sometimes. A little bit. A little bit. But um I don't know, it works, so it works. We definitely that whole opposites attract thing is one hundred percent real. He is definitely everything that I am not, but I feel like what he lacks in his personality, I definitely bring that out in him. I feel like he's a lot more outgoing and um, outspoken when I'm around. All right, the next question is, is it hard for you to be around his family when they speak Spanish? Do you feel like they are talking about you? Um... <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't know, my husband is 100% Mexican. He is actually first generation. So my both of my in-laws were born and they came here from Mexico many years ago. And my father-in-law, he does speak English, but his English has gotten really good over the years. But he doesn't feel as confident. He's gotten more confident the longer I've been around and since we have the girls. Um, my mother-in-law, hers is getting better, but hers is a lot weaker than his is. So definitely, you know, when we have parties or stuff like that, or when with them with my in-laws, they mostly always speak Spanish. Spanish was him and his sister's first language. So do I feel weird? Um, yes, she always does. She always thinks everyone's talking about that's it. That's not true. And no. she she's always like, what? What did they say? Okay, okay, they, okay. <laughs> no, that's only with like his extended family. <laughs> but like with my in-laws, my Spanish is pretty good. Like if my mother-in-law speaks directly to me and it's like it's she doesn't speak too fast, I can totally catch on and I can answer her. Um, but I know when someone's talking about me, that's when my ears perk up. My Spanish is that good. Where I know the cheese may. Okay, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it's sometimes it gets. Like, you kind of feel left out. But I don't think they're talking about me. I just feel like there's such a good conversation going that I'm like, what? What? What, what, what are you saying? And I hate interrupting all the time. And, like... I don't think it's more that you get uncomfortable. It's more the fact that you just... You can't keep up with the gossip or what do you think is gossip going on. Yeah. And, like, cause it's... Yeah. <laughs> so that's, like, my hard part. And every time I go, like, when we get in the car to go home and I'm like, what were you guys talking about? And he's like, oh, I don't remember. Drives me nuts. But, yeah. So, no. Um... <laughs> My husband's grandmother, um, she's passed away, but her Spanish, I, she would always talk to me and I would always, I always, my, always my response was, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. That's pretty much the smile and nod. Um, when it comes to disciplining the girls who is more strict, he is. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. <laughs> um, I'm definitely, I'm more of like the yeller and then I just kind of let it go but he's definitely the one who like will like punish them, like take their stuff or send them to their room and he like sticks to it. Where I'm like, okay, that's enough, give it back to him. So yeah, he's definitely more strict and sticks with it. He's the party pooper. Do you guys eat the same stuff? No, <coughs> no. Um, I follow 
I obviously you guys saw I'm on the Weight Watchers um, program. Leo just kind of does what he wants, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just does. He's like I try. I try to. I really try to make a conscious effort to watch my carbs. Uh, I try to limit the junk food, the chips, the bread, and stuff like that. Um, the beer, so now he drinks whiskey. The, <laughs> <laughs> so I, cut, I cut the beer out mostly. Uh, I only have it on special occasions. If I do have an occasional drink, very once in a while, uh, I'll have like a sip of whiskey. A sip, a sip of whiskey. Okay. He shops at Kirkland for his whiskey. If you guys were wondering, and he could finish that bottle. I don't finish it in one city. You're gonna, they're gonna think like I'm some kind of raging alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, but um, it takes me a couple of weeks to finish that. By the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we do like similar foods. We do like the same foods. Just because Danielle does the Weight Watcher stuff, I mean, we will both pick out if we have we have oh, the chance yeah. to. Yeah, he's definitely the reason like we became Dan and Roseanne. Like that's why I got so damn big. Was like we could eat. Like me and him, we can tear some food up. Like there is no, we can be some belt busters together. But he's also the reason why I went ahead and went on the keto diet because. Of the health benefits for him and I didn't want him to feel left out and I was the one that was super strict and then he still lost more weight on it than I did so baffling but yeah so that's kind of that way what was your first impression of one another one another when you met I don't know I thought she was kind of cool I was trying to get to know her because I met her through a mutual friend of mine and uh, we were at a at a club and I was just chit-chatting with her making small talk and I went to go hang out with my buddies that I had went with and then Danielle went on her own back with her friend that she went with and then like an hour or two later I ran into her again and she was hammered drunk so <laughs> that was the end of that. I was. So I totally was hammered drunk. I bought her a water and I just kind of sat her up on a bar stool and I just, left. He left I, me I there. left because you weren't saying much anymore after that. So. Um, he props me against the bar, put a water in front of me and left and went back a party with his friends. But that water wasn't free, so. Probably was free because You're he welcome. was a frequent flyer at said bar. But my first impression of him, he was really quiet. And like I remember like the next day, <coughs> um, we were I was talking to my, my girlfriend who was dating one of his friends and I was like, was that guy trying to hit on me? Like I don't even remember. But he's just he was very quiet, very conservative very much not the type of guy that I had ever dated before like like I said we were very opposite and so I was like I don't even think guys like him date girls like me but um they do I guess because here we is uh one thing you love and one thing that drives you crazy about one another okay one thing that you love about me um I love that you're pretty fearless and you'll just jump into anything and that's so like, nice. Like I'm like super uncomfortable in front of this camera and doing this whole thing and like I hate every second of it but like you're just like a natural like you just d decided one day to up and do it and you were able to do it and I think that's pretty cool. Oh okay one thing that drives you crazy. The fact that you don't put away the laundry after you wash it. <laughs> so, I, I'm telling you there is not a dirty article of clothing in my house right now but there is like two and a half baskets sitting downstairs that need to be put away. They're folded. They're clean. I just have yet to bring them upstairs and put them away. Um, I'll own that. That's just my problem. One thing that I love about you is your heart. You're a very good person. Like you, like you love somebody and you got you got our back. Like you've supported me 100% and everything. You're the only person I think in my life that I've ever met that has loved me and had my back the way you have. Um, one thing that drives me crazy. Okay, let's just pick one thing. Um, <clears throat> I hate that you take off your work boots and your wet work socks <laughs> and you put them in the kitchen right there in the front all the time. I hate that. I've gotten a lot better with that. Yeah, you just fall down the stairs now. But they're not in the kitchen now. <laughs> but so your boots are still there. Well, I've been making a conscious effort to take them by the door now. Oh, thank you, honey. You, thank you, babes. You're welcome. Um, are you guys going to try for a boy? 
Shop's closed. Yeah, guys, I uh, my baby day, baby making days are over. After Rebecca was born, I went ahead and had myself fixed like a stray dog. I got my tube side, so no more babies, no more. And um, yeah, I would never. I I would have loved to. You know, I look back on it now, especially now that I see all these like Instagram babies, and I'm like, oh my god, I want one so bad. But I'm so glad that I took that option away because. I almost died like when I had Becky, so I'm like, ooh, luckily I can't. I'll just get a dog or something. All right, so here goes another one. She says she's been married for about a year and was wondering how you and Leo stay out of ruts. I'm struggling, struggle, struggling with this and it's weighing on me. I feel like every day is the same old thing. I want to change things up, but I don't know where to start. Um, I mean, honestly, that's just kind of marriage. Sometimes it's that's life the day in and day there's been times where we've gone months without dates um i mean we're on a pretty good stretch right now not a date yeah i think what are we at now well, i don't remember the last time we did it yeah i don't i think it was my birthday it was my birthday yeah when we went downtown yeah so we haven't gone out since january <clears throat> but the thing is is um he's my best friend and you know, even though we can't physically go somewhere or you just get so consumed with the day in and day out of kids and life and house and work that, you know, I always make a conscious effort to sit down. Like I always, when it's time for dinner, I will sit down with him. Even if the kids have already ate, I'll sit down and I'll talk with him and I'll ask him how his day is. And, you know, we'll try to watch a show even though he hates half my shows or you know, just to try to find like one-on-one -on -one quality time that we both enjoy. Um, like during the summer, he does the lawn and I'll go out there and I'll like help him out with it. And just to do little things together that even <laughs> though it's not like a date, it's something that we're doing together. It's part of our partnership. I and think that's a reason too why we don't really notice the whole like, oh, we don't get to go out on a date or we didn't get to go do this or go do that. Cause mm -hmm. we, we do a lot of stuff together. Like we always sit down to have dinner together. Mm -hmm. Even if I come home late for work, then you know, I mean, obviously I'm not, don't expect them to wait for me, but you know, she'll still sit down while I sit, <clears throat> while I sit down and have my dinner or, and I'll sit down and watch her crappy shows if she wants me to. And <laughs> you know, she'll watch a ball game with me once in a while, even though she's snoring about like five minutes after the time but you know you just it's a little bit of give and take but I watched we do, soccer game with you maybe. we, we <laughs> do spend uh we do spend quite a bit of time especially like right now during the summer our, we have a pretty time consuming yard it's got a lot of plants and weeds and mm -hmm. little corners that need to get into all the time so like for instance today i got home from work we were outside for about a good two three hours together so yeah we just you just find little things around the house or you know, because sometimes you don't have the money to go and do these elaborate dates or whatever, but just find something that you both can do together and spend the time together and do it. And, you know. The other day we all went fishing, so that was yeah, that was a nice time. Yeah, it was really it fun was a, I bought $3 worth of worms and I got to do no fishing, but I still got to, you know, take Danielle and the girls and everything, so it was still cool. It was fun. Yeah, so that's probably our best advice is just to find something that you both can do together and just do it. And, and you're not always going to like what they want to do. No. You know, like the movies and their shows and stuff like that. You know, they always suck. But you, you sit there and, you know, sometimes they're going to sit through stuff that, you know, they might not enjoy either. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, <clears throat> the question was, why did you start a YouTube channel? So a few years ago when I was pregnant with Rebecca, um, beauty gurus were just really starting to kick off. And I'm a big makeup and beauty junkie. Um... You know, I freelance as a makeup artist, and I was really, really in love with that whole scene. So Leo bought me a camera for my birthday, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a whirl. So I went ahead and I tried, and honestly, I just couldn't figure out the editing, and I just life It just wasn't my time. It just wasn't my time, and I just was not 100% into it. I made a couple videos, um, and I just kind of let it go. Um, <coughs> last year... May like late like around April I was I've always stayed watching YouTube and I would watch all these cleaning videos and I would like okay I'm gonna clean let me watch my cleaning video and they would like get me super motivated and all I do is really like clean and cook and you know weight loss it's my life and I would see all these videos and I was like I can do that I remember I would tell you like I can totally do that I think I can do this and I think I could be really great at it and uh, my camera had broke and I was like you know what I 
picked up my cell phone and I did like a like a vlog ish type video and I uploaded it and I did like a Dollar Tree haul and then I went and bought a camera and I just stayed doing it and I just you know I thought that my life was you know something that I see in these videos and I feel like maybe some people could kind of relate and maybe I can reach some mothers or some women out there struggling with weight loss or anxiety or whatever because I feel like I did a lot of that and um, so I just stayed with it and that's kind of how it all came to be how do you manage YouTube work and a family um, it's hard uh, YouTube is a full-time job it's you know when I'm not recording I'm editing and when I'm not editing I am preparing to start recording another video or replying to comments or you know trying to um, you know be active with people through social media or do it because I love it I absolutely love making YouTube videos I absolutely love being friends with all you guys I feel like you guys motivate me um, I do work part-time but I am what they call a registry position so basically I'm a filler and like a relief and I work when they need me um summers are slow so I've you know been home a lot this summer that's why I've been like bumping out more videos a week um but my kids are super supportive my husband's super supportive um and they you know they'll know okay mom's gonna make a video I'll be quiet or you know mom's gonna do a video today or they'll you know they help me you know take pictures or whatever the case may be my family is 100 percent in support of me and I I can't I can't thank them enough is everybody in my life supportive of it absolutely not you know there's if you guys are on the fence of starting a channel um, there's gonna be people not only on the internet but people in your life they're gonna be like this is absolutely ridiculous get over it this is a pipe dream you know this is not something that's for real um, why are you putting this out there you know but do what makes you happy I've done everything in my life that makes other people happy and this is something that makes me happy so yeah, uh, that's how I do that. You know, uh, someone asked how old we are. So I'm 34. Uh, 38. Um, so I'm 34, <laughs> Leo's 38. They asked how old I was when I had my first baby. Uh, I got pregnant at 19 and had Rhea at 20. Um, I had Sophia at 25 and I had Rebecca at 29. Uh, we've been married nine years. We got married. Um, March 21st, 2009. Um, Rhea was four. four. Yeah, Rhea was four. Um, me and Leo started dating when Rhea was three. She was like almost three. She was almost, like, yeah, she was like two and a half. Yeah, she was like two and a half. Um, <coughs> we've been together ever since. Uh, we are, I guess, what do you, do you call it? A blended family? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, well, obviously I had Rhea before I met Leo, but this is her dad, nonetheless, and we just make it work. So, yeah, but I wanted to, I think this is going to actually, like, wrap up the questions. If you guys want, like, a part two or have any more questions, leave them down below and we can totally do that. Um, yeah, but thank you guys for hanging out with us. Hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of an insight on me and my honey and about kind of who we are as people behind the camera, like, real life. And I think I try to stay pretty transparent with you guys. So, But all right, I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much for hanging out and have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Do you care about me because you're lonely? Because I'm the only one around. You say you are better safe than sorry Cause you're too scared to hit the ground Might seem dark, but you know that I'm honest Might look broke, but you know I can solve it